Now for a quick blast around an 18th century mansion, which I've been to numerous times, so I'm not expecting to find much, although there will still be something good here. Never found anything good here, there's got to be something. That looks like a coin ball to me. Is it hell? Could be a button though. There is it hell. It's a big nut with an R on it. Hmm, hello, no, that's interesting. Looks broken, whatever it is. That's got quite a nice pattern on it. Uh, I don't know what it is, it is though. Oh, shit. It's even more broken now. It's got a lovely pattern on it though. And upon closer inspection, that's actually a bat. There's its body, there's its face, the little ears, and these are its wings. So there's a bat on each side of there. It's just a shame that's broken. No idea what it is, but it's very nice. Another interesting thing, that gave another massive signal on the E-Track. Looks like some sort of door or furniture um, decoration. Another nice interesting thing. I think that'll tumble quite well if I put that in a one of those tumbler things. Should come up lovely that. This was a nice noisy 11.39 with E-Track, uh, it's a pound coin, that's the sort of signal you don't argue with, you just dig. I've just put the earth back, there was another signal, so I've dug that, and it's another pound coin. Marvellous. Hopefully this is something semi-interesting, give a banging signal. Uh, it's another fitting off a bit of furniture by the looks of it. Again, that's something else that's going to clean up really nice. This was with the Deus, and it looks like a coin ball. It was reading 88 both ways, and it was only about 2 or 3 inches deep. Yeah, it is a coin ball, and it's a modern penny. This looks like another coin ball, hopefully. This one was reading 89 both ways. And it's a modern penny. This one was reading a nice 83 both ways with the Deus. This one was reading uh, 64 on the Deus, and it's a little musket ball. Well, that last hunt was none too successful. I didn't find one pre-decimal coin, which is unbelievable. First couple of times I came up here I was finding 50s and 60s, nearly all copper. I've only had, I think, three silver coins from this site. Only one half decent one, which was a George III bullhead sixpence, and the other two I think were just, I think there was a shilling and a florin, which were really worn. So for all the extreme wealth associated with this house and surrounding land, I found absolutely no evidence of that at all. And I've put so many hours in around here. It has to be there, so it's only a matter of time before it gives itself up. Now today I'm going to be on with the E-Track and Deus. I'm going to start with the E-Track because I'm going back to the place where I found some uh, like drawer fittings and various coppery, nice ornate things. It's got to be something there. They were pretty deep, so I want to go deep and I want to cover as much land as possible. If I find any tricky bits with a lot of contamination, I'm going to go with the Deus. It's much better at picking out signals from trashy areas. So I've got both detectors, no excuse for not finding something decent. Well, got all my gear on now, lovely and warm. Just got a new pair of trousers. These are Falraven trousers. Absolutely beautiful. Means me bones aren't gonna get creaky. 18 inch SAF coil on the E-Track. It goes really deep. And here, where there's a lot of mole activity, the stuff ends up getting really, really low down and need to get deep. 
Now because of the weight of this thing, and it is heavy, I've got a harness here and a bungee cord that attaches onto here and it just takes all the weight off. Well, it takes some of the weight off. It takes enough of the weight off for me to do this for three or four hours without getting tired. Plus, if I drop it, <laughs> I was going to say it won't break it, but that felt pretty heavy. <laughs> It doesn't drop as heavily as it normally would. It's pretty good because you can just chuck it away, get it back, and you're straight into action. It's reading 838. Oh, hey! Pre decimal 1931. So that's George V. It's in reasonable condition. That looks very much to me like an old pen knife. Very rusted and knackered. Or possibly even an old uh, razor. It's quite thin. Well, I had a hell of a job finding that. That gave a reading of 12.46. It was right on the top. Uh, it looks like a brooch of some sort. It's like a belt. Some sort of badge or brooch. Uh, I don't think it's silver though. Maybe silver plated, but not silver. Well, I've dug smaller holes for ponds. Looks like a... It's the size of a penny, possibly a Georgian penny, judging by the, the misshapenness of it and the corrosion. That's kind of the period I want to be into, because that's the time when the real wealth was on this site. So that's a good sign. Pretty blank though, so that one's probably going to go into the blank coin competition. Here's an example of what a good signal sounds like when you've got it in four-tone ferrous. You basically can't miss them. That's reading 1535, so that's pretty much in the wheelhouse of where possibly silver would sit and also half pennies so I'm gonna give this one a dig whilst it's recording it says it's about six inches And we've got a lump of lead. Still gave a cracking signal, so you've got to dig it. Ah! ah. I thought that was a two pence for a minute there. Uh, it's actually a two shilling piece, otherwise known as a florin. But unfortunately that one's 1949, so it has no silver content whatsoever. That one's George the Sixth. Ah, this was reading 12.42. Nice, strong signal. And it's an old penny. It's George the Sixth. So that's middle of last century. This is another one that's reading 11.41 to 11.42. Big booming signal. Looks like a coin ball. Yep, yeah, that's another half penny. No, tell a lie. Another penny. 19... 19 what? Ah, 1914, so that's quite an early one. That one's George V. Here we are, this is a bouncy little signal on the right hand side of the screen and it looks like there's actually some silver. There is indeed. Whoa, look at the imprint on that. That's for everybody who thinks, oh, the fake in these videos. Ah, you, you can't fake that. That's a perfect imprint. 
There you go. 1943 sixpence. 50% silver and in excellent condition. Right, I had the sixpence from just over here. There's another very similar signal here, so I'm going to give it a live dig. Watch it be crap. Well, no. <laughs> it's a lump of lead. I told you it would be crap. Whenever I do a live dig, it comes out crap. God damn it. This one was reading 1444 and it looks like another coin ball. At least I hope it's a coin ball. I've had a lot of lead here. That is a coin. And it's a one pence. This is a mega contaminated part of the site, um, so <laughs> I'm only picking out the big signals really. I think I'm probably going to have to switch to the DS if I get time. That's another um, two shilling piece, Elizabeth II. On a bit of a tricky angle that fella, it wasn't very deep though so it still gave a boom and signal. Uh, that's another old penny. That one is, oh what is it, 19... 1919. That's George V. I'm under the big trees now and this one's reading 0846. And I thought that was a coin, that's why I started filming, but it isn't. Grip big nut. This was another awful sort of bouncy signal. Um, and it's another sixpence. There you go, another imprint there. Uh, it's a, again, it's George the Sixth, And that one's 1944, in excellent condition. This is a good area for the Deus, I would imagine, because the E-Track's really struggling. There's a hell of a lot of trashy signals. I'm definitely gonna revisit this with the Deus. <sighs> Word up, my diggers. That's it. Two and a half hour hunt. Managed to find two silver coins and a possible silver brooch. I think it's just silver plated though. It wasn't too bad. I actually managed to find some pre-decimal coins this time, which is more than I managed the last time I was here. I didn't get to use the Deus on this second visit because I was just too far away from the van to warrant coming back swapping over. But I did identify a couple of spots which are very contaminated, one of which was where I found one of the silver coins. It'll be excellent for us, a detector with a small coil, so I'm definitely going to go back there with the Deus. Of course, I could just switch to the small coil on the E-Track, but I don't like farting about swapping coils. Might as well use a different detector. Now, before I go, I just want to answer a question that I get more than any other, and that is, how do you find sites and how do you get so much different land to go detecting on? Well, I'm quite lucky because I went to school with a lot of landowners' sons. I've done a lot of work out in the country, so I've got more land than I can possibly go on. It's not particularly good land, but, you know, I could go on a different field every day and it would take me years. But what do you do if you haven't got that sort of land on hand? Well, you can join a club. Most clubs still accept new members. Some have open digs as well, so have a look out for that on forums. You could always go and knock on farmers' doors, but um, if you see people out detecting on that land and then you go and knock on that farmer's door, the people who've already got that land to detect on are going to be none too happy. You're going to kind of be known as a claim jumper. I don't go knocking on farmers' doors either because I don't like that. I never did that when I used to do a lot of shooting and I don't do it when I'm detecting. You can do that, but you have to be prepared for a lot of no's. I used to get a lot of no's when I was out shooting. You'd ask on the next farm over and if they didn't really know you, they would just say no. Once you've done quite a bit of detecting on a certain piece of land, the chances are you've met the adjacent landowner in passing 
you can then pop the question, is it okay if I go on your land? Generally then, they'll say yes. So once you get one piece of land, you can get another and another and another. Best thing I ever did, a few years ago, I found a big gold ring for somebody. I gave them it back, it got put in the paper. So now, whenever I'm asking anybody in that local area, I just say I'm the lad that found the ring. It definitely pays to be honest. Really the only way you're going to lose your permission or get kicked out of a club is if you're a total knob jockey. If you're not honest, because people don't like dishonesty and word soon gets round if you aren't honest. If you found something great on that piece of land and you haven't told the farmer, you haven't handed it in to the fines liaison officer or something, people get to know about that, word gets back to the farmer, you lose permission and your chances are that farmer knows other farmers, you lose that permission as well. And very soon you end up with nowhere to detect. It seems like I'm saying the word honest quite a lot and normally people who are dishonest tend to say that word a lot. I'm honest, you can trust me. People judge you by your actions. Just be right with other people, other detectorists, and it'll ensure that you've always got a club to go to and you've always got land. Without land, you're not gonna make fines. And you're gonna be stuck detecting on your local beach and there might be bugger all on there. That's it, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you think it's worthy of being shared anywhere, please put it on forums or wherever you want to put it. Thanks for watching.